Simmons. Mrs. Simmons is my mother, but she is guest right now. Who wants her? Oh, wait a minute. Wait just one minute. Mother? Yes, dear. Telephone? Oh, no, dear, not with all the men here. Tell them I'm busy. Uh, but Mother is the society editor of the Evening News B. Oh, the society editor. Well, she is very important. Good afternoon, Miss Ellery. This is Vita Simmons. Yes, a tea and a reception for the ladies of the Wednesday Forum. You remember, my mother, the late Marcella Penny Dow, pioneer cultural leader. She came here as a child on by ox cart, and she founded the Wednesday Forum. Myrtle, uh, how many would you say there are? Oh, 75 at least. Say 100. 75. Miss Tewksbury is the soloist, with Wilda McCurdy, accompanist. Miss Tewksbury is almost done with her solo. <laughs> She'll do an encore. Oh, what if they don't give her much applause? I've known her for years. She'll do an encore. You might say I'm entertaining with the assistance of my daughter, Miss Myrtle May Simmons. Oh, Myrtle, what color is that? Oh, twilight teal, they told me. Miss Myrtle May Simmons looked charming in a twilight teal gown. Oh, I wish you could see her, Miss Ellerby. Uh, mother, come, she's almost up with her solo. Where's our caterers? Everything is ready. As soon as the singing is finished, we open the dining room doors and begin pouring. The parlors and the halls were festooned with Smilex. Yes, festooned. Yes, this is the first time we've entertained in years. Yes, there is a reason for it, but I don't want it in the papers. We all have our troubles, Miss Ellerby. Oh, uh, the guest list, uh... Mother, come on. Oh, you feel part of you, Miss Ellerby. I'll call you back. Mother, Mrs. Chauvinet just walked in. Oh, Mrs. Eugene Chauvinet Sr. Her father was a scout with Buffalo Bill. Oh, so that's where she got that hat. Myrtle, you must be kind to Mrs. Chauvinet. She has a grandson about your age. Oh, but what difference will it make with Uncle Elwood? Myrtle, we promise not to talk about this this afternoon. The whole point of this party is to get you started. We begin with the older women here and work our way to the younger ones. Oh, but we can't have anyone here in the evening, and that's when men come to see you. The evening. The only reason we can have anyone here right now is because Uncle Elwood is playing pinochle at the 4th Avenue Firehouse. I am aware of that, but we'll, they'll just have to invite you out, and it won't do them a bit of harm. Oh, you have so much to offer. I don't care what anybody says. There's a sweetness about every young girl. And then a man comes along, and look what he does with that sweetness. But you just have to meet somebody. That's all there is to it. Well, if I do, they'll just say, there goes Myrtle May Simmons. Her uncle is Elwood P. Dowd, the biggest screwball in town. Elwood P. Dowd and his pal. Myrtle, you I'm, promised. I'm sorry, Mother. Let's get them into the dining room. Now remember, when they come in, you'll give your little speech in honor of your grandmother, and don't forget to do this. And after I do that, I'll say a few words about Uncle Elwood and his pal Harvey, that dreaded Harvey. Oh, that's right, Myrtle. Just let everyone in the Wednesday Forum hear you say that name. You promised you would not say that name, and, and you said it. Well, I'm sorry, Mother, but how do you know Uncle Elwood won't show up here and start introducing Harvey to everybody? Myrtle, this is very unkind of you. Elwood is my, my biggest heartache. Even if people do call him peculiar, he's still my brother. And besides, he won't be here this afternoon. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Oh, Mother, why can't we live like other people? Myrtle, must I be telling you? 
Elwood is not living with us. We are living with him. Living with him and Harvey. Grandmother know about Harvey? I have wondered and wondered about that. If she did, she never wrote to me to tell me about him. What? Why'd she have to leave all her property to Uncle Elwood? Well, I suppose it's because she died in his arms. People are sentimental about that kind of thing. You know, you always say that and it doesn't make sense. She couldn't write a will after she died, not could she? Colonel May, don't be didactic. It's very unbecoming in a young lady and men loathe it. Now remember, to do this. I'll do my best. Oh, Miss Tewksbury's voice is certainly fading. But not fading fast enough. Oh, lovely, Miss Tewksbury, lovely. It's simply lovely. After you, Harvey. It's a shame about the pinochle game being canceled today down at the firehouse. Oh well, there's always next week, right? Maybe we can go down to uh, Charlie's a little later on, just in time for happy hour. Say, looks like Vita's having a party of some sort. Hmm? That's right! That's right, she is hosting the ladies of the Wednesday Forum. I'd almost forgotten. Say, how about we drop in and say hello to all her guests? I think Vita will be so excited to see us. Let's do that, come on. We should probably go upstairs and uh, freshen up a bit. After you. Do with that guest list. Maybe it's in my dressing room. Mother, Mrs. Chauvinet wants to see you. Here's Mother, Mrs. Chauvinet. Here she is. Oh, Simmons, I thought you were dead. Oh, Aunt Ethel, no, I'm very much alive, thank you. And this grown-up girl must be your daughter. I've known you since you were a baby. I know. What's your name? Yeah. Oh, Aunt Ethel, this is Myrtle May. She's named after her father's two sisters. He's dead. That's what confused you. Where's Elwood? Oh, Elwood couldn't be here. Uh, would you care for some tea? Elwood isn't here? No. Do you realize that yet it's been years since I've seen Elwood? <laughs> no. Where has the time gone? <laughs> Shame on him. That's the main reason I came. I want to see Elwood. Oh, come on, Dad, but there, there are loads of people who want to speak with you. But I don't understand. I was saying to Mr. Chauvinet just the other night, what on earth has happened at Elwood Dow? I never seen him at club dances anymore, and I haven't seen him at a horse show in years. Does Elwood see anybody? Oh, yes, Aunt Ethel. Elwood sees somebody. Oh, yes. Is Elwood happy, Vita? Oh, yes, Aunt Ethel. Elwood's very happy. You needn't worry about him. Oh, look, there's Mrs. Frank Cummings. Don't you want to go speak with her? My, but she looks ghastly. Hasn't she failed, though? If you think she looks bad, you should see him. Is that so? I must have them over. She looks frightful. I thought she was dead. <laughs> now what about tea, Vita? Oh, certainly, if you'll just let me precede you. After you, Harvey. Oh, watch your ears. Watch your ears. Go on, step in the living room. Elwood! Elwood Dow! Aunt Ethel, what a pleasure to come in and find a beautiful woman waiting for me. Elwood, you haven't changed. Oh, come on, Ethel, you mustn't miss the party. There's punch if you don't like tea. But I do like tea. Stop pulling at me, you two. Elwood, good night next week. Can you come to dinner? 
any night on Ethel, any night at all, I would be delighted. Oh, what? There was some mail for you today. I took it up to your room. Well, thank you, Vita. That was very nice of you. Aunt Ethel, I would like you to meet Harvey. As you can see, he's a puka. You've always heard me speak of Mrs. Chauvenet. She's one of my oldest and dearest friends. Aunt Ethel, it is so nice that you can meet Harvey. And he is so glad to have met you, I can tell. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, she's the one. This is the one. Harvey says he would have known you anywhere. Oh, Vita, Myrtle May, you took look absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Come along, Harvey, and let's say hello to all of our friends. Aunt Ethel, I beg your pardon. What? You're standing in his way. There. Come along, Harvey. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. There. You look great. Um, go on in. I'll be with you in just a moment. Aunt Ethel. I can see you're disturbed about Harvey. Please don't be. He stares like that at everybody. But he liked you. He really, really liked you. Coming, Harvey. Would you care for some tea? No, well, I think I'll be running along. But what? I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll be talking to you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh my goodness! Myrtle May, where are you going? To my room. Uncle Elwood is out there introducing Harvey to everyone. I can't face those people now. I wish I were dead. Myrtle May, come back here. Stay with me. I won't do it. I can't. I can't. We will get him out of there and up to his room. Come along. We must. Now, pretend I'm fixing your corsage. <laughs> Pretend we're having a, a gay little chat. Keep your eyes out for him. He always comes when I call. Now then, do you see him yet? No, not yet. Hello, Mrs. Cummings. Smile, can't you? Have you no pride? I'm smiling, and he's my own brother. <sighs> oh, Mother, people get hit by trucks every other day. Why can't something like that happen to Uncle Elwood? Oh, Myrtle, I'm ashamed of you. This thing isn't your uncle's fault. Oh, see. Ow! You're sticking me with that pet. That must be Miss Ellerby. Now keep smiling. Keep looking. Mrs. Cummings is leaving. He must have told her what Harvey is. Hello, this is Vita Simmons. Should you wear what you have on? What have you on? May I ask who this is? But I don't know any Mrs. Greenewalt. Should you bring what? May I ask who invited you? Huh. Mr. Dowd. I do believe there has been some sort of mistake. Uh, well, I never. Never what? Uh, just one of your uncle's friends. She wanted to know if she should bring a quart of gin to the Wednesday Forum. Oh, there he is. He's talking to Mrs. Halsey. Oh, is Harvey with him? What a thing to ask. How can I tell? How can anybody tell except Uncle Elwood? Elwood, dear, would you please come here a moment? I promise your Uncle Elwood has, has disgraced us in this house for the last time. I, I'm going to do something I've... Never done before. Mother, what did you mean just now when you said this wasn't Uncle Elwood's fault? If, if it's not his fault, then whose fault is it? Never mind. I know whose fault it is. Now, keep smiling and hold your head high and go on out there and pretend like nothing has happened. You're no match for Uncle Elwood. You'll see. Uh, Mother is waiting for you. Yes, Vita. Elwood, dear. Would you come here a moment, please? Wait, just a second, Harvey. Yes. 
Elwood, would you please stay in here until the party is over? I have something I'd like to discuss with you, and it's very important. Certainly, Vita. I happen to have a few minutes of free time, and you're welcome to all of it. Would you like uh, Harvey to wait with me? I most certainly would. Self-comfortable. Vita says she has something very important to discuss with us. Wonder what that could be. I bet she wants to congratulate us on the impression we made at the, her party this afternoon. I'm sure that's it. Hmm. What's that? Oh, Jane Austen. Uh, Gossett and Dunlap. Um. Deluxe edition. Oh, the usual acknowledgments. Chapter one. This is O.R. Simmons, 343 Temple Drive. Is that correct? We were born and raised there. It's old, but it's our home. We love it. And you wish to enter your brother to the sanitarium for treatment. Your brother's name? <laughs> Mrs. Simmons, what is your brother's name? I'm sorry. I know life isn't easy for everybody. But we must hold our head high and go on. That's what I'm always telling little May, and that's what she's always telling me. Oh, this just has heartbroken your Myrtle May about her Uncle Elwood. Oh, uh, Elwood P. Dowd, that's it. Elwood P. Dowd. His age? Oh, 47, the 24th of this past April. He's a Taurus. Taurus the bull? I'm a Leo. Myrtle's on the cusp. 47. Is he married? Oh, no, he never married. He always stayed home with Mother. He was such a good homeboy. He loved his home. Do you have him with you now? Oh, yes. He's down in a cab. Downstairs. I tipped the driver a dollar to watch him. Uh, of course, I didn't tell him why. You can't say these things to a perfect stranger. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Will you please go down to a taxi and ask a Mr. Dow if he'd be good enough to step up to number 24, South Wing G. Ask him? This is his sister, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, how do, ma'am? I'd be happy to escort him. Thank you. The rates are here on this card, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, no, thank you. That will all be handled by my late mother's estate. Marcella Penny Dow? Uh, oh. Judge Gaffney is our attorney. I will see if Dr. Sanderson can see you now. Sanderson? But I want to see Dr. Chumley. Oh, you must be mistaken. Dr. Sanderson is the doctor who speaks to everyone. Dr. Chumley sees no one. Well, he's still head of this institution, isn't he? He's still a psychiatrist, isn't he? Still a psychiatrist? Dr. Chumley is more than that. He's a psychiatrist with a national reputation. When someone has a mental breakdown, they at once think of Dr. Chumley. Well, that's still his office over there, isn't it? Well, I want you to march right in there and tell him who's out here. Once he knows who's here, he'll come out. Oh, I mustn't dare disturb him, Mrs. Simmons. I would be discharged if I did. Well, I, I don't like being handed off to some second fiddle. Dr. Sanderson is no one's second fiddle. Sure, he's young and he hasn't been out of medical school for very long, but Dr. Chumley tried out 12 and kept Dr. Sanderson. He's really wonderful. To his patients. Very well. Let him know I'm here. Right away. Vita, isn't this wonderful?
Mrs. Simmons. Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> I'm sorry, you startled me. I didn't realize you were there. You're Dr. Sanderson? Yes, Mrs. Simmons, um, please take a seat. Very well, thank you. I just hope you don't think I'm jumpy like that all the time. Oh, not at all. Um, Miss Kelly tells me you're concerned about your brother. Dowd, is it? Mr. Elwood P. Dowd? Yes, Doctor. This isn't easy for me, Doctor. Oh, naturally. These things aren't easy for the families of patients. I understand. It's, it's just what he's doing to himself, Doctor. I mean, Myrtle May has a right to nice friends, hasn't she? She's young and has her whole life ahead of her. Oh, Myrtle May, that's my daughter. Ah, yes, your daughter. How long has it been since you began to notice any peculiarity in your brother's actions? I noticed it right away after Mother died and Myrtle May and I came from Des Moines to live with him. I could tell right away that, that he was... he was... That he... that he what? Take your time, Mrs. Simmons. Don't strain. I'll wait for it. Doctor. Is everything I say to you confidential? That's understood. Well, because it's a slap in the face what Elwood's doing to us after everything we have done for this community. I am not a gossip, Mrs. Simmons. I'm a psychiatrist. Well, for one thing, he drinks. To excess? To excess? Well, wouldn't you call it excess when a man doesn't let a day go by without stepping into one of those Honky tonks, speaking with the riffraff and people there he doesn't even know, playing cards with them, inviting them to our home, giving them food and money. And here I am trying to get Myrtle May started. Well, if that isn't excess, I don't know what excess is. I did not doubt your statement. I merely asked if your brother drinks. Yes. He drinks, and I want him committed here permanently, because I cannot stand another day of, of that Harvey. Oh, Myrtle May and I have to set a place at the table for Harvey. We have to move to the side of the sofa and make room for Harvey. We have to answer the telephone when Elwood calls to speak to Harvey. And then, this afternoon at the party with Mrs. Chauvenet. Oh, Doctor, I'm going to tell you something that I have never told anyone before. Every once in a while, I see Harvey, that big white rabbit, myself. Oh, isn't that terrible? I've never even told that to Myrtle May. Oh, Mrs. Simmons. Oh, I... And what's more, Doctor? He is every bit as big as Elwood says he is. I can see that you have been quite under a great nervous strain recently. Yes, I have. Grieve over your mother's death depressed you considerably? Yes. It has. Nobody knows how much. Have you been losing sleep? Yes, I have. Who can sleep with all of that going on? Are you short-tempered over trifles? Well, you try dealing with those two and see how long your temper lasts. Loss of appetite. Who can eat at a table with Elwood and his big white rabbit? Well, I'm through with it, I tell you. I'm going to sell the house. I'm going to become conservator of Elwood's estate. And then, Myrtle May and I can finally entertain in peace. Oh, Doctor, it's just all too much. I, I can't take it. Of course, Mrs. Simmons, of course. You're tired. Yes, I am. You've been worrying a great deal. Oh, yes, I have. And now? I'm going to help you. Oh, doctor. 
Just sit there quietly, Mrs. Simmons. I'll be right back. Oh, I'll just go downstairs and get out what's things. Why did no one answer the bell? I didn't hear it, Doctor. I rang and rang, Mrs. Simmons. Sound the gong, Wilson. That poor woman must not leave these grounds. So, the dame's made her big getaway. Huh? Oh, her condition is very serious. Go after her. Oh, I can't believe it. Henry, main gate. Allow no one to leave it through the main gate, Henry. We're looking for a patient. Oh man, I really shouldn't have left her alone, but no one was answering the bell. Wilson wasn't staff doctor. What have you available on? What do we have available, Miss Kelly? Uh, number 13, our West R is ready, doctor. Have her taken down up there immediately, and I will prescribe preliminary treatment. You need to speak with the brother. Um, Dowd is the name. Mr. Elwood P. Dowd. Get him on the telephone, please. But, Doctor, the woman said that the treatment was for her brother. Of course she did, Kelly. It's the oldest dodge in the world, always used by a cunning type of psychopath. She apparently knew that her brother was about to commit her, so she came out to discredit him. Get him on the telephone, please. But, Doctor, I thought the one was all right. So I had the brother taking it, taken up to number 24 South Wing G. He's up there now. You had Wilson take the brother in. No gags, Miss Kelly. You're not serious, are you? Oh, I did. Doctor, I am terribly sorry. Oh, well, if you're sorry, that fixes everything. Oh, no. I'll do it, Doctor. Do it. Hi, Miss Dunphy. Yes, can you please um, send Mr. Dowd up here and bring his clothes and... Oh, ask him to step down to my office right away. Ask him to step down to the office right away. Dr. Sanderson's made a terrible mistake and he wants to explain... Explain? Apologize! Thankfully, she hasn't put him in the hydro tub yet. She'll let him out. Well, beautiful and dumb, too. It's almost too good to be true. Doctor, <sighs> I am terribly sorry. Judge Gaffney called and said that Mrs. Simmons would be coming and she came here with her brother and... <sighs> you know what? Stop worrying. We'll squirm out of this some way. When are you going? I have to tell the chief about it, Miss Kelly. He may want to handle this himself. But he'll be furious. He'll die, and what's her make me? The responsibility is all mine, Miss Kelly. Oh, no. Tell him the responsibility is all mine. Oh, I never mentioned your name, except in my sleep. But this man, Dad. Don't let him get away. I'll be right back. Um, but what shall I do? What shall I say? He'll be furious. Um, look, Kelly, he'll probably be fit to be tied, but he's a man, isn't he? I guess so. His name is Mister. You know, go through your whole routine. You know, the eyes, the swish, the works. I'm immune, but I've seen it work on some of the people, some of the patients. Keep him here, Kelly, but you have to do a strip tease. <laughs> All of the... Oh, you're wonderful, Dr. Sanderson. You're about the most wonderful person I've met in my life! Yeah, but how about helping me with that Simmons dame? What? Yeah, the Simmons dame. Did you catch her? Ah, uh, slick as a whistle. You know, I hid behind a bush, and she comes waltzing down that little path, humming a little tune, and I jumps out and I says, Sister, there's a man up at the big house who wants to see us. Man! You should have heard her scream and yell. She's wacko, all right. Well, send her up to number t uh, number 13, Upper West Arc. Please. She's up there already. I brought her in through the back. What I need from you is I'll hold her down and you take her off out of her street clothes. Can't, Wilson. I have to wait until the brother shows up. 
Well, make it snappy. Elwood P. I'm Miss Kelly. Well, nice to meet you. Let me give you one of my cards. If you should want to call me, call me at this number. Don't call me at that one. That's the old one. Thank you. My pleasure. And if you should happen to lose it, don't worry. I have plenty more. Uh, would you please have a seat? Thank you. I'll have two. Sanderson is very anxious to speak to you. Won't you please take a seat? After you, my dear. Oh, I really mustn't. I'm in and out all the time, but you should not worry about me. Go ahead and take a seat. After you. Um, could I get you a magazine to look at? I would really much rather look at you, Miss Kelly, if that's okay. You really are quite lovely. Why, thank you. Some people don't seem to think so. Well, some people are blind, as is often brought to my attention. And now, Miss Kelly, I'd like to introduce you to a very good friend of mine. Dowd! No. Elwood P. Let me give you one of my cards. Oh, Mr. Dowd, I'm Dr. Lyman Sanderson, Dr. Trumley's assistant out here. Well, good for you, Doctor. I'm glad to know you. How are you today? Oh, that's going to depend on you, I'm afraid. Please sit down. You've met Miss Kelly. I have had that pleasure. And now I would like to introduce both of you to oh, later on. Be glad to. Please take a seat because first I really want to explain how. After Miss Kelly. Sit down, Kelly. Is that chair quite comfortable for you, Mr. Dowd? Uh, yes. Would you care to try it? Oh, no, thank you. Um, is it a little warm in here? Do... Would you like me to open, open the window? Mr. Dowd, Dr. Sanderson wants to know if he should open a window. Oh, that's entirely up to him. I would not presume to live his life for him. Now, Mr. Dowd, I can see that you're not one to be taken by any high-flown phrases or beating about the bush. Is that so, Doctor? You have us at a disadvantage here. You know it, and we know it. Let's lay all our cards right on the table. Well, that certainly appeals to me, Doctor. Well, it's the best way in the long run. <laughs> people are people, no matter where you go. Well, that is very often the case. And being human are therefore liable to make mistakes. Miss Kelly and I, we made a mistake here this afternoon, and we'd like to explain it to you. We, um, it is not Dr. Sanderson's fault. It is all mine. A human failing, as I said. Hmm. I find this all very interesting. You and Miss Kelly. This afternoon, you say? We do hope you understand, Mr. Dowd. Oh, yes. These things are often the basis of a long and warm friendship. And the fault is, of course, not Miss Kelly's here, but mine. Dr. Sanderson, your attitude may be old-fashioned, but I like it. Now, if I had just seen your sister first, that would have been an entirely different story. Oh, you surprised me there, Doctor. I think the world and all of Vita, but I suppose she has seen her day. Oh, you mustn't attach any blame to her. She's a very sick woman. Came out here insisting that you were in need of treatment, and that's perfectly ridiculous. Oh, Vita shouldn't worry about me. I get along fine. Oh, exactly. But there had already been a call from your lawyer, Judge Gaffney, and oh, she had already that. talked to Miss Kelly here, and... I know Judge Gaffney, and his wife, too. Wonderful people. Oh, can I get anything for you, Mr. Dow? What did you have in mind? Uh, um, it's just that your sister was extremely nervous and plunged right away into a heated tirade on your drinking. That's Vita. She became hysterical. Vita shouldn't worry about me. I can take care of that. Oh, exactly. Oh, I suppose you have a drink every now and then, same as the rest of us. Yes, Doctor, I do. Matter of fact, 
I'd like one right now. As a matter of fact, so would I. But your sister's reaction to your drinking was entirely too intense. Does your sister drink, Mr. Dow? No, no. I don't think Vita's ever taken a drink in her life, Doctor. Oh, well, I'm going to surprise you. I think she has and does constantly. Well, that certainly does surprise me, Doctor. Uh, Vita's a lifelong Baptist. Now, it's not her alcoholism that's going to be the basis of my diagnosis of her case. It's much more serious than that. It was when she began speaking so emotionally about this big white rabbit. Harvey. Yes, I believe she called him Harvey. Yep, that's right. Harvey is his name. She claimed that you were persecuting her with this Harvey. Well, she shouldn't feel that way. I'm not persecuting Vita. And Doctor, exactly. before we go any further, I must insist that I introduce well, you to you. Please let me make my point first, Mr. Dow. This whole trouble with your sister did not spring up overnight. This stems from trauma. Of uh, what? <laughs> from trauma. Spelled T-R-A-U-N-A. -A. It means shock. There's nothing unusual about it. There's the birth trauma, the shock to the act of being born. That's the one we never get over, Doctor. Oh, you have a nice sense of humor, doesn't he, Miss Kelly? Oh, yes, Doctor. Well, thank you, Doctor, and may I say the same about the two of you? In summary, her condition is serious, but I can help her. She must, however, remain out here temporarily. Well, Doctor, I've always wanted Vita to have everything that she needs. But uh, I wouldn't want Vita to stay out here unless she liked it and wanted to stay. Oh, um, hmm. Uh, Miss Kelly, did uh, Wilson get what he came after? Yes, Doctor. What was Mrs. Simmons' attitude? Not unusual, Doctor. Um, Mr. Dowd, if this were any ordinary delusion, something reflected on the memory picture. In other words, if she were seeing something she had seen once before, that would be one thing. As it is, it stands to reason that no one has ever seen a big white rabbit seven feet high. Not very often, Doctor. Oh, I like you, Dowd. I like you too, Doctor, and Miss Kelly over here. I like her. So, she must remain out here temporarily. Under these circumstances, I would admit my own grandmother. Oh, Doctor, does your grandmother drink? Oh, you? it's just an expression. Now, will you sign these temporary commitment um, forms as next of kin? It's just a formality. Oh, well, Doctor, I probably should have Vita take a look at this. Vita does all the signing and the managing for the family. She's really quite good at it. Oh, we can't disturb her right now. Well, Maybe I can have Judge Gaffney take a look at it. Oh, you can tell him about it later. No, tell him. I advised it. Okay. Now, may I say that for a layman, you show an acute perception into psychiatric problems. Well, is that right, Doctor? I never knew that I knew anything about it. No one really ever does, don't you think? Well, the good psychiatrist isn't found under every bush. Well, you have to pick the right bush, Doctor. And now... Since we've all seemed to have enjoyed this so much, I'd like to invite the two of you to come down with me to Charlie's place and have a drink. When I find people I like, I like to stick right with them. Oh, I'm sorry. We're on duty right now. Some other time. Be glad to. Okay, uh, when? Oh, I can't say right now. Miss Kelly and I don't get off work until 10 o'clock at night. Well, okay. Let's make it 10 o'clock tonight. Well, and you, Miss Kelly? Oh, Dr. Chumley does not approve of any members of his staff fraternizing. But, since you've been so understanding, perhaps we can manage it. Well, it's settled. I'll come out here tonight at 10 o'clock in a cab, and the four of us will spend a delightful evening together. I want the two of you to become friends with a very good friend of mine. You said later on, Doctor, and later on it will be. Goodbye for now. I can finally breathe again. Oh boy, that was a close shave, all right. But the man, he seemed reasonable enough. You know, that man is proud. What he has to be proud of, I don't know. I played up to that pride. 
You can get to almost anyone if you want to. Now I need to look out on that Simmons woman. Um, Dr. Sanderson? Um, you say you can get to anyone if you want to. How do you do that? Oh, it takes study, Kelly. Years of specialized training. There's only one thing I don't like about this whole Dow business. What's that? Having to make that date with him. Of course, the man has left here a good friend and booster at the sanitarium. So I guess I'll have to go with him tonight, but you don't have to go, Miss Kelly. Oh. Oh, there's no point in it. I'll just head on down to Charlie's, have a drink with him, pat him on the back, and then leave. I have a date tonight anyway. Oh, yes. Uh, I didn't even want to go. The idea bored me stiff. I wouldn't go if my life depended on it. No, Miss Kelly. What's the matter? What are you getting so emotional about? Sure, he was a peculiar man with funny clothes, but his manners were perfect. I saw you giving him the dull face stare. I didn't miss that. He wouldn't sit down till I sat down. He called me lovely and called me dear. I would go have a drink with him if you weren't. Well, sure you would. Look at him. All he does is hang around bars. It doesn't work. All that court and bowing and then giving about him is care every time a woman makes a move. Why, he's as outdated as a cast iron deer. But you'd go have a drink with him and let him flatter you. You're a wonderful girl, Kelly. Let me tell you something. You. No, Dr. Sanderson, Miss Kelly. Yes, yes doctor. doctor. Tell the gardener to prune more carefully among my prized dahlias along the fence down by the main road. They'll be ready for cutting next week. Oh, about that difficulty with the woman with the large rabbit. Has that been smoothed over? Yes, Doctor. I spoke with the brother and he seemed quite reasonable. I've known a lot of patients over my years that have seen the animals but never a patient with an animal that large. Yes. She called him Harvey. Harvey? Unusual name for an animal of any type. Harvey's a man's name. I've known many men over the years with that name Harvey, but never have I had a, a, anybody with an animal of that kind of name whatsoever. This uh, case has an interesting phase, Doctor. Yes, Doctor. I will now go up with you and look in on this woman. It might be that we can use my famous Formula 977 on her. I would be happy to give you my advice of the prescribing treatment, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, and now, may I ask, what is that coat and hat doing over there? Oh, I, I don't know. Whose is it? Oh, I have no idea. Um, well, do you know Miss Kelly? Was it Dowd's? Dowd was wearing his hat and coat. Maybe this belongs to one of the relatives of the patients. Oh, give me that hat. There might be some sort of identification in here. What's this? What's this? Two holes! Come to the crown of the hat, see? That's strange. Oh, must be some new fad. Here, put it away. Hang it up. Get it out of here. Hey, Dr. Chumley. Oh, there you are, Wilson. How is every little old thing? Oh, uh, fair. Thank you, Wilson. Fair. Great. Look, uh, I need some help with this Simmons dame. She is really wacko. We gotta get her a straitjacket or something. Kicking and screaming. <clears throat> and you, you forgot me, didn't you? Well, I got her corset off all by myself. Uh, Wilson, well, uh, Dr. Sanders and I are on our way up to look in on this woman now. Oh, that's great. I got her in the hydro tub. Um, oh, crap. I left the water running on her. Oh, yes. You better get promise, Willie. Oh, hello, Dr. Sanderson. Willie, you haven't forgotten Dr. McClure's cocktail party. We promised them thankfully. Yeah, 
yeah, that's right. But I, I'm going up to look in on a patient right now. I'll be down in just shortly. Give a little quick diagnosis, Willie. We don't want to be late to the party. Oh, I'm dying to see the inside of that house. Good evening! Oh, hello there. I am Mrs. Chubbly, Dr. Chubbly's wife. Oh, I'm Elwood P. Dowd. Pleased to meet you. Let me give you one of my cards. If you should want to call me, call me at this number. Don't call me at that one. That's the old one. Thank you! Is there something I can do for you? What did you have in mind? Well, you seem to be looking Yes, I'm looking for Harvey. I went off with her. Harvey? Is he a patient here? Oh no, Mrs. Chumley. Nothing like that. Does he work here? No. Harvey is what you might call my best friend. He's also a puka. He came out here this afternoon with me and Vita. Where was he when you last saw him? Well, as a matter of fact, he was sitting in this chair and his hat and coat were on that table there. Apparently, I don't see him anywhere. What was that word you just said, uh, puka? Oh yes, that's it. Is that something new? No, as a matter of fact, as I understand it, that's something quite old. Oh really? I haven't happened to hear it before. Well, I'm not too surprised by that. I hadn't either until I met him. Mrs. Chumley, I do hope you get an opportunity to meet Harvey. I think he would be quite taken with you. Have a seat. You see, when Harvey likes someone, he expresses himself quite definitely. If he's not particularly interested, he just sits there like uh, well, an empty chair or an empty space on the floor. Harvey takes his time making his mind up about people. Choosy, you see. You know, that's such a bad way to be in this day and age. Now, Harvey is quite fond of my sister Vita. That's because Harvey's fond of me, and Vita and I come from the same family. But Vita is just not very fond of Harvey. Isn't that rather too bad, Mrs. Chumley? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Dowd. I gave him a long time ago expecting my family like my friends. It's useless. But we must keep on trying. There's no harm in trying, I suppose. That's right, because if Harvey's told me once, he's told me a million times. Mr. Dowd, I would do anything for you. Mrs. Chumley? Yes? Did you know that Mrs. McElhaney's Aunt Rose is due to pop in on her unexpectedly from Cleveland tonight? Oh, well, I, I didn't. I don't know. Well, neither did she. That puts you in the same boat, doesn't it? Well, I don't know anybody by the name of Mrs. Mrs. McElhaney. She's our next door neighbor. Wonderful woman. Harvey told me that little tidbit about her Aunt Rose coming to visit tonight. And that is a juicy little news item that you may feel free to pass around. Well, I, uh... <laughs> Say, would you care to come downtown with me and have a drink? Well, no, thank you. I really couldn't. Uh, I am waiting for Dr. Chumley, and if he were to come down and find me gone, he'd be liable to race. He would be irritated. Oh, uh -huh. well, we wouldn't want that now, would we? Perhaps another time, then. Yes. I'll tell you what I'll do, however. What will you do, however? I'm interested. If your friend comes in while I'm still here, I'd be glad to leave him a message for you. Oh, would you do that for me? I would so appreciate it. No trouble at all. If your friend comes in while I'm still here, mm -hmm. what would you like for me to tell him? Oh. Ask him to join me downtown, if he has no other plans. Meet Mr. Dowd downtown. Any particular place downtown? Oh, Harvey knows where. He knows this town like a book. Harvey, you know where. Harvey what? Oh, just Harvey. Oh, I tell you what. What? Oh, dear. <laughs> Doctor and I are going right downtown to welcome on you. Doctor. 
Dr. McClure is having a cocktail party. Oh, a cocktail party at 12th and Montview. We're driving there in a few minutes. Whoops, we can give your friend a lift into town. Oh, I would certainly hate to impose, but I would definitely appreciate that. No trouble at all. Dr. McClure is having this party for his sister from Wichita. Well, I didn't know Dr. McClure had a sister from Wichita. Oh, you know Dr. McClure? But are you sure you haven't had time to go downtown with me for a drink, Miss Chumley? Oh no, I really couldn't, but thank you just the same. No, well, okay. Perhaps another time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you, and I hope I get to see you again soon. Yes, yeah, so do I. Good night for now. Oh, Mrs. Chumley, you can't miss Harvey. He's really tall, like this. Good evening, my dear. That Simmons woman is uncooperative, Doctor. She refuses to admit to me that she sees this big white rabbit. She insists that it's her brother. I want you to give her two of these at nine, and then uh, another one at 10 if she continues to be restless. Another trip to the hydro room, say at 8. And then again at 7 in the morning. Then we'll see if she won't cooperate tomorrow. Won't we, Doctor? Yes, Doctor. Do you know where you can telephone me if you need me? Are you ready, Pat? Yes, Willie. And oh, Willie. Yes? There was a man in here, a man named, oh, here's his car. Dowd, Ellen B. Dowd. That's Mrs. Simmons' brother, Doctor. I told him he could look around and gave him full visiting privileges. Oh, no, 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 no. She mustn't see anyone tonight. No one at all. You can tell him that. Oh, uh, yes, Doctor. Well, he didn't ask to see her. He was looking for someone, hmm. some friend of his. Who could that be, Dr. Sanderson? I have no idea. Um... He said it was someone who came out here with us this afternoon. Oh, uh, was there anyone with Dow this afternoon, Miss Kelly? Not that I remember. Well, he said there was, and he said he last saw his friend sitting right over there with his hat and coat. He seemed quite disappointed. Dr. Sanderson? I told him if we located his friend, we could give him a lift into town. Was that all right, Willie? Of course, of course. Psychiatrist. Uh, I'm making a routine checkup on the spelling of a name before I enter it into our permanent records. Now, Judge, uh, you telephoned out here this afternoon to uh, commit, have one of your clients committed. Now, the spelling of that name, was it with a W and not a U? Uh, Mr. Elwood P. Dow. 
Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> Dr. Sanderson, I, I believe it is Sanderson. Yes, Doctor. Oh, oh, you know that much, do you? You went to uh, medical school? You specialized in the study of psychiatry? You uh, graduated. You went forth. Perhaps they failed to tell you that a rabbit has two large pointy ears and that a hat for that rabbit would have to be perforated to make room for those ears. Oh, doc Doctor, he seemed perfectly reasonable this afternoon. <laughs> Dr. Sanderson, the, the function of a psychiatrist is to know, to recognize the difference between those who are reasonable and those that merely talk and act reasonably. <laughs> Do you realize what you've done to me? No, 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 no. Don't you answer, I'll tell you. You have permitted a psychopathic case to walk off of these grounds and to roam around with a big white rabbit. You have subjected me, a psychiatrist, to the humiliation of asking to call of all people a lawyer to ask who has been out here to who came out here to be committed and who came out here to commit. Dr. Chumley, I am. Uh, yeah, just a minute, Wilson, I need you. I am going to have to do something I haven't done in 15 years. I am going to have to go out after this. Down, and I'm going to have to bring him back to the sanitarium. And when I bring him back to this institution, your commitment to it is over as of that moment. Wilson, get the car. Pat, call the first. Tell them when we can't make it. There's Kelly, come with me upstairs, and we'll get this woman out of the top. Oh, we'll have to tell the cook we'll be home for dinner. She'll be furious. Wilson! Yes, ma'am? What is a poop cup? A what? A poo cup! Sorry to me, how should I know? Oh, I wonder if it's in the encyclopedia here. They have everything here. I wonder if it's a lodge or what it is. Oh, I, I don't dare to stop to do this now. Dr. Chumley won't want to come down and find me still here. He'll raise Oh, I mean, oh, dear, oh, dear. P-O-O-K-A, Puka. From old Celtic mythology, a fairy spirit in animal form, always very large, the puka appears here and there, now and then, to this one and to that one, at his own caprice. A wise but mischievous creature, very fond of rum pots, crack pots, and how are you, Mr. Wilson? How are you, Mr. Wilson? Encyclopedia wants to know. Oh, to hell with it. That's right. The stairs at the end of the hall go up to the third floor. I'll be right there with you. Well, where is she? Where is who? Who do you mean, Judge? I mean, your mother, where is Betty Louise? Wait, Judge, you know where she is. She took Uncle Elwood up to the sanitarium to put him in. Well, then why was I called with a lot of hysteria? I could hardly make out what she was talking about. Carrying on something fierce. Mother, carrying on, what about? I don't know, she was hysterical. Well, that's strange. She took Uncle Elwood out to the sanitarium. All she had to do was put him in. Did you find it? I'll be with you in one minute. They found it. Who? 
Now what? What are you talking about? When Mother left the house with Uncle Elwood, I went over to the real estate office to put the house on the market. And what do you think I found there? I'm no quit, kid. I found a man who was looking for an old house just like this one to cut up into buffet apartments. He's going through it right now. Now see here, Colonel May, this house doesn't belong to you. It belongs to your Uncle Elwood. Yes, but now that Uncle Elwood's locked up, Mother controls the property, doesn't she? Where is your mother? Where is Betty Louise? I told you, Judge. She went out to Chumley's Rest to tell them about Uncle Elwood and Harvey and have him put in. Well, then why was I called and had a game interrupted with her screaming at me to meet her here over something important? I don't know. I simply don't know. Have you got the deed to this house? Of course, it's in my safe. But you know, I feel kind of bad about this business of locking Elwood up. Mother and I will be able to take a long trip now out to Pasadena. I always liked that boy. He had, he could have been anything, he could have done anything. And all he did was get a big rabbit. He had everything. He had personality, brains, friends, men liked him, women liked him, I liked him. You mean to tell me that once Uncle Elwood was actually like other men? I mean, that women actually liked him, you know, in that way? Well, not since he started hanging out with this rabbit. But once, once your grandmother's mailbox was full of those little blue scented envelopes for Elwood. I can't believe it. Of course, there was always something different about Elwood. Oh, I don't doubt that. Well, when he... He was always calm. Whenever any dip, there was a sudden change in plans, I was admirable of it. Uh, I should have been suspicious. He, uh, take your average man, and he sees a big white rabbit, he'll do something about it. But not Elwood. Oh. He took that in stride, calmly, just like he always said. But look where it got. Oh, and you don't dream how far he's taken this rabbit thing. Actually, I do. He's had that rabbit in my office many a time. I don't. I may be old, but I don't miss much. What's that noise? Oh, the prospective buyer on the third floor. Oh, mother! Look, Judge. Oh. What is it, Peter Louise? Oh, I thought I'd never see either of you again. Oh, take hold of her, Judge. She looks like she's going to faint. You're going to be all right, mother. You're going to be Stay. completely all right. Say it, girl. Oh, just slow down. Not so fast. Don't rush her, Myrtle. Ease your ear. Find me some place to sit down. Oh, find me some place to sit. Oh. Sit right here, baby oh. Louise. Oh, oh, oh. oh, just your purse. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I'll get you some tea, mother, right now. You take your coat off, Judge. Let's take your coat off, Myrtle. Let Myrtle take your coat off. Oh, just leave me alone. Let me sit here. Let me relax and catch my breath. Let her catch your breath, Judge. Go on, Myrtle. Baby Louise, go on. Omar, I want you to sue them. They put me in and let Elwood out. What's this? <gasps> Mother. Oh, just... Look at my hair! Oh, but why? What did you say? What did you do? You must have done something! I didn't do anything! I simply told them about Elwood and Harvey! Oh. Well, this doesn't make any sense. Why would this happen to you then? I told them about Harvey, and then I went downstairs to get Elwood's things. And as I was walking along the path, this awful man stepped out. Oh, he was a white slaver. I know he was. He, he wore one of those white suits. That's how they advertise. A, a, a man, Mother, what did he do? What did he do? He took me inside and, and then he... And then he... Uh, but poor Mother, was he a young man? Myrtle May, perhaps you'd better leave the room. Now? I should say not. Go on, Mother. He took me upstairs, and he tore off all my clothes. <gasps> Judge, did you hear that? 
Go on, mother. I'll chew him for this. And then he set me down in a tub of water. My goodness, I'll sake, chew. that's it. <laughs> I always thought that what you were showed on your face. But don't you believe it, Judge. Don't you believe it, Myrtle. Oh, that man took me in there and treated me like I was a woman of the streets. But I fought. I've always said, if a man jumped me, I'd fight. Haven't I always said that, Myrtle? Oh, that's what she's always said. That's what she always told me to do. Oh. And then he hustled me into that sanitarium, set me in that, that tub of water, and treated me like I was a... Like a what, Mother? <laughs> A crazy woman! Oh, but that was just for spite. Well, me. And then, those doctors, they came upstairs and started asking me all kinds of questions about sex urges and all that filthy stuff. You need to make sure they clean that place up. The authorities need to clean it up. And Myrtle May, I don't want you ever going out there. Do you hear me? This stinks. This is stinks. I am it. Judge, I want you to do something. You have got to sue them. I will. I will. If Chomley thinks he can run an unsavory place like this, on the outskirts of town, he'll be publicly chastised. I'll run him out of the state. Tell me, Judge, is that all doctors in places like that think about? Sex? I, I don't know. Well, if it is, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. It's all in their heads anyway. Why don't they go for long walks in the fresh air? Myrtle May, Judge Gaffney used to take long walks everywhere for years, didn't he, Judge? What I need to do is take some notes. Now, you said these two doctors came up here and talked with you. That's Dr. Chumley, and what's your other doctor's name? Sanderson. Oh, but don't you believe a word he says, Judge. He's a liar. Close-set eyes. They're always liars. And besides, I told him something in the strictest of confidence, and he blacked it. What did you tell him, Mother? I don't want to talk about it. It's not important. Let's just forget about it. Oh, you can't trust anybody. They believe whatever you told this Dr. Sanderson, it, you can tell us. This is your daughter. I'm your daughter. I know which is which. I don't want to talk about it. I want you to sue them, and then I just want to get up to my own room. Uh, the mother, this is the important thing anyway. Where is Uncle Elwood? Why did I bother trying to help him? Something always protects Elwood. Oh, that awful puka. <laughs> Mother, answer me. Where is Uncle Elwood? I don't know where he is. They're not interested in men in places like that, Myrtle. Oh, don't act so naive. What is that noise? I found a buyer for the house. What? Uh, mother, look, the important thing is, no matter who jumped at you out there, we've still got to find Uncle Elwood. We've still got to lock up Uncle Elwood. I don't know where he is. Omar, next time, you take him. Oh, when Elwood finds out what they did to me, he won't stand for it. Omar, I want you to sue them. And Myrtle May, I hope, as long as you live, that a man never, never jumps you, rips off all your clothes, and dumps you in a tub of water. <laughs> now see, Mother muffed everything. No matter what happened out there, Uncle Elwood is still wandering around town with Harvey. What I need to do is take some more notes. This is all Uncle Elwood's fault. He found out what Mother was up to, so he had her put in. Then he ran. Now, don't talk like that. Your Uncle Elwood thinks the world and all of your mother. 
Ever since he was a little boy, he's wanted to share everything he had with her. Oh, 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 I'm not giving up. I'll get detectives. We'll find him. And besides, you'd better save some of that sympathy for me and Mother. You don't dream what we have to put up with around here. Wait till I show you something he brought home about six months ago. We hid it in the garage. Oh, just wait till I show you. I'm going to go up to church and talk to Baby Louise. She's not telling us all. I sense that. <laughs> and just wait till I show you, Judge. Okay, I'll wait. Okay, is he here? What? Who's, what's this? That dude with the rabbit. Is he here? No, no, but who are you? He ain't here, Doc. Okay, he's coming in anyway to talk to you. By the way, what's your name? I am Judge Gaffney. Well, you know, the doc likes to know who he's talking to. Okay, Doc, well, this well. is Judge Gaffney. Well, Chumley, I need to talk to you. <clears throat> well, uh, Judge, let's not waste any time. Has he been here? Who? Elwood? No. But, look. Yeah, has he been here? I mean, he's, he's, he's on to us now. He's got to be on the lam or something. You know, he's going to be awful to catch. Oh, it'll be more difficult, but I can do it. They're sly, they're cunning, but I get them. I always get them. Uh, do you have the list of all the places that we've been, Wilson? Yeah, I got it right here, Doc. Well, well, go ahead and read it. Let's see here. We've been to 17 bars. Eddie's Place, Charlie's Place, Bessie's Barn Dance, the 4th Avenue Firehouse, the 10th, the 12th, and the 9th Avenue Firehouses, yeah. just to be sure, the Union Station, and the Grain Elevator. Say, why does this guy go down to a Grain Elevator? The foreman is a friend of his. He has many friends, many places. Well, the reason I came out here to see if Mrs. Simmons had any other suggestions of where we might look for her brother. I need to inform you, Doctor, that Mrs. Simmons has retained me to sue you. What? For this business this afternoon at the sanitarium that happened there. A suit? And while we're on that subject. That's just beautiful, Doc. And after we've been dragging your butt all over town looking for him. Well, what happened this afternoon was just a unfortunate mistake. I have discharged my assistant who made that mistake. And I am prepared to take on this man's case personally. It interests me. And when I'm interested in a case, that is something that no amount of money can buy. You can ask anybody. But this business this afternoon, Oh, Doctor. water, water under the dam. You know, the way I see this, uh, I see it this way. Well, the important thing is, is that we need to get this man back to the sanitarium where he belongs. Oh, that's right, Judge. That's just what I say. <laughs> Meet Miss Margot May Simmons, daughter of Miss Bailey Louise Simmons, niece of Elwood Dow. How do you do, Dr. Chumley? Oh, hi, how do you do? Nice to meet you. Hey, little May. What? Oh. <laughs> well, well, the reason I came out here, I, I, been, I want to talk to Mrs. Simmons. Is she available? Oh, Judge, I, she won't come down and talk to you. I just know she won't. You try to get her to come down, Judge. Look, what happened to your mother, she was manhandled. God knows what happened to her this afternoon. But this man, his approach to her was not professional, it was personal. Wilson, this is a serious charge. Hey, Dr. Chumley, you're not going to take the word over this. What's your name again? Gaffney, Judge Owner Gaffney. You're not going to take the word of this old blister Gaffney yes, over me? Or a dame who sees a rabbit, are you? She doesn't see the rabbit. It's her brother Elwood that sees the rabbit. That's right. It's Uncle Elwood. Come with me, Doctor. All right there, Judge. Uh, Wilson, I got a situation here. Wait for me. Okay, Doc. So, what will make? What? If we put your doctor, uh, your uncle, in the in the sanitarium, 
You're liable to come out and uh, visit him on visiting days, aren't you? Oh, I really don't know. Maybe. Well, if you do, I'll be deaf. Oh, mm -hmm. you will? Yeah. Oh. And if you don't see me right away, that's okay. Just stick around. I'll show up sometime. You will? Yeah, for sure. Say, uh, Moyle May, uh, you heard the doctor tell me to wait, right? Oh, yeah. Well, whilst I'm waiting, I could sure use a living onion sandwich and a cup of coffee. Well, certainly. Uh, I'll precede you. Moyle May, you're all right, kid. Oh? Yeah, Dr. Chumley noticed it right off the bat. Oh. You don't miss a trick. You know, and you got something. What? Well, you're a good kid and all, and you got a really nice build. <laughs> but you got something else, too. What? <laughs> you got the wackiest uncle that ever set his face in our nut house. <laughs> Chumley's rest? Yes, it's Dr. Chumley there, please. Oh, Mrs. Chumley, how are you tonight? This is Elwood P. Dowd speaking. Say, Mrs. Chumley, were you able to locate Harvey? Oh, that's okay. I'm sure I'll find him. Say, I missed you at the McClure cocktail party. Yes, the people were all very charming, and I was able to leave quite a few of my cards. I stayed until you phoned to say you couldn't make it. I believe a patient had escaped from the hospital. Oh, where am I? Well, uh, I'm here, but I'm leaving right away. I must go find Harvey. Well, my regards to you, Mrs. Chumley, and uh, anyone else you happen to run into. Goodbye. Sorry, Mother. <sighs> now that is a masterpiece. Doctor, you may as well go home and wait. I am suing you for $50,000, and that's final. Mrs. Simmons. Hello, yes? Uh, all right. Uh, that picture above your mantle? Oh, doctor, that painting is the pride of this home. Who painted it? Oh, I don't recall. Some man, he, he came here for the sittings, and then he, we paid him, and he left. Well, I suppose if you have the money to pay people, you can persuade them to do just about anything. Uh, oh, yes? Uh, no, this is Dexter 1567. Doctor, what did I say to you? Well, you expressed yourself. I don't remember the words. I said, this is a belated civility. Isn't that what I said, Doctor? Oh, you said something of the sort. Doctor, you brought this up. You might as well learn something quickly. I took a course in art this past winter. The difference between a fine oil painting and a mechanical thing like a photograph is simply this. A photograph shows only the reality, whereas a fine oil painting shows not only the reality, but the dream behind the reality. It's our dreams that keep us going. What separates us from the beasts? Why, I couldn't go on if I thought it was all eating and drinking and sleeping and taking our clothes off and putting them back on and going, oh, 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 doctor! No, well, oh, well, doctor, no! Take it easy, take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Everything seems to be all right. Hey, what's the matter? Doctor, that is not my mother! Oh. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that.
hear that. Oh, doctor, he's been here. What? No one's been here. Oh. Easy now, take, take it easy. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Yes? Yes? Who is this? This is him. Mrs. Simmons, this is your brother. Oh, let me speak to him. Don't tell him I'm here. You, you, be casual. Hello, Elwood, dear. Where are you? What? Just a moment. He won't tell me where he is. He wants to know if, if Harvey's here. Phil, Harvey is here. But Harvey isn't here. Uh, uh, tell him Harvey's here. That way he might come here looking for Harvey. Uh, you have to humor him. Just humor them. Hello, Elwood, dear. Yes, Harvey is here. Where are you? What? Oh. Oh, just a moment. He won't tell me where he is. He wants me to call Harvey to the phone. Oh, uh, well, tell him Harvey is here, but can't come to the phone because he's in the bathtub. The bathtub? Yeah, tell him that he's in the bathtub, but he, it will send him there whenever he gets out, and that way we know where he's at. Oh, doctor. Oh, you just have to do it, Mrs. Simmons. Hello, Elwood, dear? Yes, Harvey is here, but he's in the bathtub. I'll send him over when he's dry. Where are you? What? Oh. Oh. What? what did he hang up? He said Harvey just walked in the door and that we should go check to see who's in the bathtub because it's probably a stranger. <laughs> oh, but I know where he is. He's at Charlie's Tavern. That's a bar done at 12th and Main. 12th and Main. That's like uh, two blocks down and one block over? Yes, Doctor, but where are you going? I'm going down there to get to your brother and get him, put him back in the sanitarium where he belongs. Doctor, don't do that. Send one of your orderlies. Oh, but Mrs. Simmons, if I am to help your brother... Oh, he can't be helped. There is no helping him. He must be picked up, locked up, and left. You consider your brother to be a dangerous man? Dangerous. Why? Well, I won't say why, but if I didn't think he was dangerous, why would I want him committed permanently? Hmm. Well, then I must observe this man. I must see the expression on his face when he talks to this rabbit. Uh, he does talk to the rabbit, doesn't he? <laughs> they tell each other everything. What, what's that? Uh, yes, of course he talks to them, but doctor... Don't go yourself. You'll regret it if you do. Nonsense! You underestimate me. <laughs> you underestimate my brother. Not at all. It'll be all right. I can handle him. <laughs> you think you can handle him, huh? We'll see about that. Oh, uh... Myrtle? Myrtle, go see who's in the bathtub. Oh! Thank you. I may call later. Well, that's it, Doc. Did we get all your stuff from upstairs? All packed, Wilson. Thanks. You know, that's tough, you getting bounced and all. I had you made for somebody who would make the grade. Those are the breaks. When do you leave? Oh, as soon as Dr. Chumley gets back. Did you hear back from the desk sergeant from the Police Accident Bureau? I just talked to the downtown dispensary. They haven't seen him. Something's beginning to smell awful funny. He's been gone for four hours and not a word from him. Well, Doc, I guess this is sayonara. I want to wish you a lot of luck, and it's too bad that you, get, you got kicked in the app, uh, app tray. Uh, thanks, Wilson. Good luck to you, too. If you don't hear back from the sergeant, uh, let me know. 
because uh, I'll go downtown and find Dr. Chumley myself. He should have known better than to go off looking for that psycho without me. Oh, I would like to go help you look for Dr. Chumley Wilson. Well, that's smelly, you, Doc. And after you got the brush off. Oh, I have no resentments against Dr. Chumley. He was right. I was wrong. Dr. Chumley is the biggest man in his field, and it's my loss. Oh, you not to be able to work with him. You're not so small yourself, Doctor. Oh, thanks, Wilson. Don't mention it. Dr. Sanderson? Yes, Miss Kelly? I would just like to say that uh, I am very sorry to see you go, and I wish you a lot of luck. Are you sure you can spare these good wishes, Miss Kelly? I suppose not. Forget it. Miss Kelly, this is for nothing. Just a little bit of advice. I'd be careful about the kind of company I kept. I beg your pardon? Oh, you don't have to. I told you it was free. I saw you on Saturday night dancing with that drip in the Rose Room at the Frontier Hotel. Oh, you did? I didn't notice you. I'd be careful of him, Miss Kelly. He looked to me like a schizophrenic all the way across the floor. You should have given him a second thought. Here's my date, not yours. That was just his mentality. The rest of him, wow. She was quite beautiful, though. Who? That girl you were with? I thought you didn't notice. You bumped into us twice. How could I not? Not that this makes much difference, but that woman is a sweet, charming little lady. She has a sweet, kind disposition, and she knows how to conduct herself. Funny, she couldn't read a better date on a Saturday night. And she has an excellent mind. Why doesn't she use it? Well, I don't suppose you're to be censured for the flippant hard shell you have. You're probably compensating for something. You'll never know, Doctor. You know, because you interest me as a case history. That's all. I'd like to know where you get that inflated ego. I can't believe you. Inflated ego case history. Well, let's not run away. Let's finish it. Oh, leave me alone. Oh, gladly. Chumley's rest. Oh, yes, Sergeant. Uh, we haven't heard anything about him from... Uh, in town or the suburbs. Listen, I think we should... Oh, never mind, he's here. Mr. Dowd! Hello. These are for you, my dear. Oh, I thank you. They're quite fresh, too. I just pulled them up outside. I hope Dr. Chumley didn't see you. They're his prized dahlias. Um, uh, have you seen Mr. Chum Dr. Chumley? Uh, no. Those colors are quite lovely against your hair. I've never worn burnt orange. Such a trying color. Well, you would improve any color, my dear. Why, thank you. Um, did he go upstairs? I don't know. By the way, where's Dr. Sanders? In his office there, I think. Okay, thank you. Oh, Dr. Sanderson. No, Dr. Sanderson. I have a cab outside if you and Miss Kelly can get away. Oops. Where's Dr. Chumley? Oh, is he coming with us? That's nice. I don't think so, Doctor. Dr. Sanderson, I must apologize for being just a few seconds late. I thought Miss Kelly there could use some flowers. And after what happened out here this afternoon, Doctor, flowers really should be from you. Dr. Sanderson, as you grow older and pretty women pass you by, you'll look back with deep gratitude at these generous girls of your youth. Shall we go? Um... Just a moment, uh, Dowd. The situation has changed since we met this afternoon, but I urge you to have no resentments. Dr. Chumley is your friend. He only wants to help you. Well, that's very nice of him, Doctor, and uh, he's my friend too, and I want to help him. Now, if you'll start with taking a cooperative attitude, that's half the battle. We all have to face reality, Dowd, sooner or later. 
Doctor, I wrestled with reality for 40 years, and I'm happy to say that I finally won out over it. Shall we go? There you are. Upstairs with you, buddy. Whoa, let's go. Whoa, whoa, there must be some misunderstanding. I came down here to take Dr. Sanderson and Miss Kelly to Chumley's for a drink. You're welcome to join us if you'd like, Mr. Wilson. Wilson? They have quite a floor show. Yeah? You ought to see the floor show we got upstairs. Now upstairs. Just a minute, Wilson. Um, where did Dr. Chumley go, Dowd? Well, as I said, he did not confide his plans in me. You mean he ain't showed up yet? Not yet. Where did he go? Uh, that's what we're trying to find out. Mr. Dad walked in here all by himself. Oh, he did, did he? Well, that's just swell of him. You better stop talking or I'm going to work you over. I'd rather you not do that, Mr. Wilson. And I'd rather you not even say such a thing in the presence of a lovely young lady like Miss Kelly here. Um, Mr. Dowd, Dr. Chumley went into town to pick you up. That was four hours ago. My, my. Where has the evening gone? Listen to this guy, smarty. Just a minute, Wilson. Did you see Dr. Chumley tonight, Dowd? Yes, I did. He came into Charlie's about dinner time. Say, that is a cozy spot. How about we all go down there and talk this over with a cold one? Nope, you just stay put. Now I'm asking the questions. You're going to button your lip and give me some straight answers, or I'm going to work you over. What you suggest is impossible. What's that? You suggest I button my lip and give you straight answers. That can't be done. Let me handle this, Mr. Wilson. Well, then handle it. But find out where the doctor is. Dr. Chumley did come to Charlie's place, you said. Yes, he did. And I was quite glad to see him, too. Go on. Well, he asked for me, so naturally the proprietor brought him over to our table and left him. Okay, okay. We exchanged the conventional greetings. I said, uh, how do you do, Dr. Chumley? He said, how do you do, Mr. Dowd? I believe we said that at least once. Yeah, I get on with it. I then introduced to Harvey. To who? Uh, a white rabbit, seven feet tall. Seven feet tall? Seven feet and a half. <sighs> Let the, you know, you guys are fooling around with this guy, and Dr. Chumley's probably bleeding to death in a ditch somewhere. If those were his plans for the evening, he did not tell me. Go on, Dowd. Well, the doctor came over to our table and uh, sat with us. I sat on the outside like this, and Harvey sat on the inside near the wall. Dr. Chumley sat across from Harvey, where he could look at it. Yeah, spend all night on the seating arrangements, why don't you? Well, Harvey suggested I buy him a drink. And knowing that Harvey does not like to drink alone, I suggested to Dr. Chumley that we join him. And then? We joined him. Come <laughs> on. We joined him again. And then what? We kept right on joining. Oh, skip all the joining already. Well, Mr. Wilson, you're asking me to skip a rather large portion of the evening. Come on, let's just get your story, please. Well, Dr. Chumley and Harvey got into a conversation. Quietly at first, but then it got heated and Dr. Chumley raised his voice. Yeah, why? Well, Harvey seemed to think that Dr. Chumley should assume part of the financial responsibility of all the joining. But uh, Dr. Chumley didn't want to do that very well. I can believe that part. Yeah, I'll let him talk. This guy, he's loony. Let's see what else he can come up with. Well, I agreed to pay the whole thing. I didn't want any trouble. We go down there quite often, Harvey and I and Charlie's, and the proprietor is a fine man with an interesting outlook on life. Oh, then the other matter came up. Cut the damn double talk and get on with the story already. Mr. Wilson, you appear to be a very sincere type of individual, but I must insist that you not use that kind of language in the presence of a lovely young lady like Miss Kelly down there. You're right, Dowd, and we're sorry. You say the other matter came up. Oh, yes, yes. There was a beautiful blonde woman, a Mrs. Uh, Smithles, I believe. She was seated at the booth across from us. Well, Dr. Chumley went over to sit next to her, explaining that they had once met in Chicago, I believe. Well, her escort promptly brought Dr. Chumley back over to our booth, 
explaining to Dr. Chumley that he should probably just mind his own affairs. Does he have any? How should I know? How, what, what is it? What? What, what, is it, what is Does he have any affair? How should I know? Mr. Dow, would you please hurry this up? We're all so worried. Well, Dr. Chumley suggested to Harvey that they go down to Blondie's Chicken Inn. Harvey wanted to go to Eddie's instead. So while they were arguing, I went to the bar and ordered another drink. When I came back, they were gone. Where did they go? I mean, where did the doctor go? I don't know. I had a date out here with Dr. Sanderson and Miss Kelly. So I came out to pick them up, and I hoped that later on, the three of us would bump into Dr. Chumley and Harvey and make a party of it. So you're satisfied? You got his story now. You're lying, and we know it. Mr. Wilson, I never lie. Yeah, well, you know where the doctor is, and I'm going to find out where. Oh, don't touch him, Wilson. Maybe he isn't lying, Wilson. You're telling me you're going to believe this cock and bull story about him drinking with some white rabbit? Maybe they did go down to Charlie's. And saw a white rabbit, I suppose. And why not? Harvey was there. At first, Dr. Chumley was a little frightened of Harvey. But that gave way to admiration as the evening wore on. That's a nice expression. As the evening wore on. With your permission, I'll say it again. As the evening wore on. And with your permission, I'm going to knock your teeth down your throat. Mr. Wilson, haven't you some friends you can go play with? The this guy! He can't come in here with an ordinary case of detox. No! He's got to come in here and see a white rabbit seven feet tall. Well, stimulating as all this it is, I really must be getting downtown. Hmm. Maybe we need to. Uh, maybe we need to uh, call something. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Yes, Charlie's place. Is Doctor Charlie anywhere around there? What? Oh, well, don't bite my head off. Ah, oh, he was mad. He said that Mr. Dowd is welcome any time. But his friend is not. Oh, that's McNulty, the bartender. He thinks a lot of me. Now let's all go down there and have a drink. Wait a minute. Stipulating as all this is, I really must be getting downtown. I have things to do. Uh, Mr. Dow? Yes, my dear. What is it you do? Well, have a seat down here. Harvey and I. We go to the bars and have a drink or two and play the jukebox. Soon the faces of the other people turn toward mine and smile. They're saying, we don't know you, mister, but you're a lovely fellow. We've entered, Harvey and I warm ourselves in all these golden moments. You see, we've entered as friends, or as strangers, as soon we have friends. They come over to us. They sit with us. They talk with us. They drink with us. They talk about the big, terrible things they have done and the big, wonderful things they will do. They talk about their hopes and their regrets, their loves and their hates. All very large. See, well, no one ever brings anything small into a bar. And then I entered the party. And he's bigger and grander than anything they offered me. And when they leave, they leave impressed. The same people seldom come back. But that's envy for you. I guess there's a little bit of envy. Oh, this, my dear. Isn't that rather too bad? Mr. Dowd, how do you happen to call him Harvey? Well, Harvey's his name, Doctor. Well, how do you know that? Well, that's a rather interesting coincidence, Doctor. One night, several years ago, I was walking early in the evening down Fairfax Street, between 18th and 19th. You know the walk? Yes, yes. Well, I just helped Ed Hickey into a taxi. Ed had been mixing his rye with his gin, and I felt that he needed conveying. 
Well, just then I started walking and I heard a voice say, Good evening, Mr. Down. Well, I turned around and here was this great white rabbit leaning against a lamppost. Well, I thought nothing of that. Because when you've lived in a town as long as I've lived in this one, you get used to the fact that everybody knows your name. Well, naturally, I went over to visit with him. He says, Ed Hickey was a little spiff this evening, or could I be mistaken? Well, he was not mistaken. I think the world and all of Ed, he was spiffed. So we stood and talked a while longer, and pretty soon I said, um, You have the advantage of me. You know my name, but I don't know yours. Right back at me, he says, what name do you like? I didn't have to think for a minute. Harvey has always been my favorite name. So I said, Harvey. And doctor, this is the most interesting part of the whole thing. He looks at me and says, what a coincidence. My name happens to be Harvey. Mr. Dowd, what was your father's name? Frederick. John Frederick. Hmm. Mr. Dowd, when you were young, you had a playmate, didn't you? Yes, sir. Someone that you were very fond of, and you spent many carefree, happy hours with. Yes, Doctor. Didn't you? What was his name? Vern. Vern McElhenney. Did you know the McElhenney's Doctor? No. Oh, too bad. There were lots of them, and they circulated. Wonderful people. Think carefully, Mr. Dowd. Wasn't there someone, somewhere, at some time, whom you knew by the name of Harvey? Did you ever know anyone by that name? No, Doctor, I don't believe so. Maybe that's why I always had such hopes for him. All right, Wilson. Let's go take Mr. Dowd upstairs now. I ain't taking him no west. You guys have been handling this all wrong. Dr. Tommy's out there somewhere. We don't know where he is. No, this is your show. You handle it. All right. Come on, Mr. Dowd. Come on, Elwood. Okay, Lyman. But I won't be able to visit with you for long. I promised Harvey I'd take him to the floor show. <sighs> Brother. Nuts, they're all nuts. Dr. Tomlin, you're back. Are you all right? Uh, all right? Uh, of course I'm all right. Uh, uh, I've been followed. Lock that door. You've been followed? Who's following you? None of your business. Send him downstairs. No, Wilson, okay. don't, don't leave me. I won't. Just a minute. Just a minute. Well, Judge Gaffney, how the hell are you? Hello, Moyle Meg. Hello. 
Where should I be jumbling? I've got to talk to him. Jumbling, this is serious. It most certainly is. More serious than you would suspect. We need to talk. No, 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 not, not in there. He doesn't want to go in there. No, sir. Okay, well, Dr. Chumley, Marley, sit down. Oh, Dr. Chumley, Marley, sit down, sit down. Wilson, don't go, don't leave me. Right. I have my note here, the facts. Can anyone hear me? We can hear you. Is that all right? Yes. Now, Dr. Trumley, have you ever entertained the possibility of there being an actual creature like this rabbit Harvey? Uh, of course, there isn't, and anyone who thinks so is crazy. Well, don't look at me like that. There's nothing funny about me. I'm like my father's family. They're all dead. <laughs> now, what this is, my client, uh, Mrs. Uh, Simmons, swears under oath that she was standing in her kitchen on November 2nd, while standing in her kitchen, in her house, she heard her name being called. She turned and saw this great white rabbit, Harvey. He was staring at her. She made some remarks and drove the creature from the room he left. What, what did she say to him? The remarks themselves aren't important. The important thing is he left. No, no, no. I want to know what she said to, to get this creature out of her sanitarium. Oh, I really hate to have you tell him, Judge. It isn't a bit like Mother. Quit stalling and get on with it. Well, she looked at Robert right in the eye, and then the he of anger said, To hell with you. To hell with you? He left. He left, but that's not the point. The point is, is that, is this perjury or something we can cope with? I'm waiting for your opinion, Doctor. Ruthie, I've been looking all over for you. Dr. Sanderson, disregard what I said this afternoon. I want you on my staff. You are a very astute young man. Oh, why did you hear? Oh, darling. See you later. Listen, Doctor, you just got to keep Uncle Elwood out here. Oh, no, no, no. I want this sanitarium the way it was when, before that man got out here this afternoon. Oh, well, I certainly know what you mean. You do? Well, yes. It certainly gets on anyone's nerves the way Uncle Elwood knows what's going to happen before it happens. Uh, this morning, for instance, Uncle Elwood told us that Harvey told him that Mrs. McElhenney's Aunt Rose was going to drop in on her unexpectedly from Cleveland. And, and did she? Did she what? Oh, Aunt Rose. Did she come out here like Harvey said she would? Oh, yes. These things always happen the way Uncle Elwood says they will. But what of it? What do we care about the McElhenney's? You say this sort of thing happens often? Yes. Isn't it silly? Uncle Elwood tells us that Harvey tells him everything. Harvey knows everything. Well, how could he when there's no such thing as Harvey? Oh, fly specs. I've been chasing my whole career, chasing fly specs. When miracles are leaning on lampposts down at 12th and Fatty Fairfax. Oh, good. Nothing here but people. Oh, mother! You promised not to come out here this <laughs> evening. Well, good afternoon, Myrtle May. I brought Elwood's bathroom. Why are you all just standing around? I thought you'd be committing him. Why don't you have a seat here, Baby Louise? Oh, I will not sit there. Hey, Myrtle May, how about you and me stepping out Saturday night? Huh? Certainly not. Myrtle May, come here. Sorry. Well, is it settled? It will be. Dr. Shumley, may I give an opinion? Oh, yes, by all means. 
his opinion. He's the one I told you about, Judge. The eyes. It's my opinion that Mr. Elwood P. Dowd is suffering from a third degree hallucination and that the other party involved is um, suffering from auto-suggestion. I recommend shock formula 977 on him and bed rest on... Oh, you, you do? That's my diagnosis, doctor. Now, Mr. Dow will not see this big white rabbit anymore after this injection. We have used it on hundreds of psychopathic cases. Don't you call my brother a psychopathic case? There's never been anything like that in my family. Oh, but Mother, if you didn't think he was psychopathic, why did you bring him out here? I couldn't very well take him to the jail, could I? Uh, besides, this isn't your uncle's fault. Oh, why did he have to bother Elwood of all the people in town? Why did he pick on Elwood? Don't keep your war in. Keep your war out. If this formula brings people back to reality, give it to them. That's where we're going here, Elwood. I don't think it'll work in a case like this, Doctor. Well, it always has, Doctor. He always follows Elwood home. He does? Yes. But if you give him this formula, then Elwood won't recognize him when he comes to the door. And if Elwood doesn't see him, when he, Harvey does come to the door, I'll deal with him. Oh, but Mother, won't you please stop talking about Harvey as if there was such a thing? Oh, Myrtle May, you have so much to learn, and I hope you never learn it. Oh. Here he is. Well, hello, everybody. Oh, well, dear. I, I brought you your bathrobe. Thank you, Vita. That was very nice of you. Now, what are we going to do? You've got to do something. Oh, yes, we must. I should say so. Oh, it's imperative. Well, while we're all making up our minds, why don't we go down to Charlie's and have a drink? Elwood, you're not going anywhere. You're staying here. That's right, Uncle Elwood. Stay here, son. I plan to leave. You want me to stay. An element of risk, an element of conflict in any discussion is a good thing. It means everyone's taking part and no one is left out. By the way, Dr. Charlie, how did you get along with Harvey? <laughs> What's your decision, Doctor? Uh, what? What are we going to do? Uh, why don't you all step into the other room? I must see this man alone. I'll give you my diagnosis in a moment. Please do hurry, Doctor. Oh, I will. I will. Oh, oh you're staying here. Mr. Down. Yes, Doctor. Why don't you have a have a seat? Oh, thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else I can get for you? What do you have in mind? <laughs> Mr. Dow, what kind of a man are you? Where did you come from? Oh, didn't I give you one of my cards? Then where on this tired old earth did you find a creature like him? Oh, Harvey the Puka? Is it true that he has a, a function that he can actually... Gets advance notice? Yes, I'm happy to say it is. Harvey is, uh, he's versatile. Harvey can stop clocks. What? Well, you've heard the expression, his face can stop a clock. Yes, but why? For what reason? Well, Harvey can look at your clock and stop it. And you can go away as far as you like, with whomever you like, and be gone as long as you like. And when you return, Doctor, not one moment will have ticked by. You mean he has a function that, uh... Well, Einstein has overcome time and space. Harvey has overcome not only time and space, but any objection. And you say that he does this for you? Well, he would at any time. But so far, I've never been able to think of any place I'd rather be. I've always had a fine time, wherever I am, with whomever I'm with. Why, I'm having a wonderful time right here with you, Doctor. 
I know where I would go. Where? I'd go to Akron. Hmm, Akron. Yeah, there's a cottage camp outside of Akron in a grove of maple trees. It's cool, green, and beautiful. Ah, oh, my favorite tree. I would go there with a pretty young woman, a strange woman, quiet woman. Under a tree? Oh, I wouldn't even want to know her name. I would be Mr. Brown. I think you're making a mistake not letting this woman know your name. You might be acquainted with the same people. Well, I would order out for some cold beer, and then I would talk to her. I would, I would tell her things that I've never told anybody, things that I've got very deep inside of here. And then I'd send out for more cold beer. No whiskey? Oh, beer is better. Well, maybe under a tree, but she might like a highball. I wouldn't even let her talk to me. But as I talked, I would want her to reach out a soft white hand and to stroke my head and say, you poor thing. Oh, you poor, poor thing. Well, doctor, I think you're making a mistake not letting this woman talk. If she gets around at all, she may have picked up some interesting news items. And I know you're making a mistake with all that beer and no whiskey. No, no, it would be wonderful. How long would you want this to go on, Doctor? Two weeks. Two weeks. Well, like I said, I think you're making a mistake with all that beer and no whiskey, but it's your two weeks. Oh, cold beer and Akron and one last fling. Man! <sighs> Doctor, would you like to lay down? Uh, 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 no, no, Mr. Dow. Uh, do you think that he, or could he, or would he do this for me? He could, and he might. I've never heard Harvey say a word against Akron. By the way, Doctor, where is Harvey? Well, what, you don't know? No, the last time I saw him, he was, he was with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, I bet he's still down at Charlie's waiting for me. Yeah, that's it. He's at Charlie's. That's right. Well, if you'll excuse me, Doctor. Oh, uh, Mr. Dow, I'm not in there. Well, I couldn't leave without saying goodbye to my good friend, Dr. Sanderson. Uh, Mr. Dow. Mr. Dow. Dr. Sanderson is not your friend. None of those people are your friend. I am your friend. Well, thank you, Doctor, and I am yours. And that sister of yours, she's the one at the bottom of this conspiracy against you. Why, today, she had your commitment papers drawn up. She has your power of attorney. She has the key to your safety box. She's the one that brought you out here. My, my. Vita did all that one afternoon. She certainly is a whirlwind, Doctor. Oh, don't you have any righteous indignation? Doctor, my mother used to say to me, Elwood, she always called me Elwood, she'd say, Elwood, in this world you must be oh so smart or oh so pleasant. For years I was smart. I recommend pleasant, and you may quote me on that. Oh, just the same, Mr. Dowd. I... I, I can protect you, even if I have to lock your sister up. Hmm. Would you want me to do that for you? No, Doctor. Uh, not that you don't have a nice place here and everything, but I just think that Vita would be happier at home with me, Harvey, and Myrtle May. Oh, to hell with decency. I've got to get that rabbit for myself. Go ahead and knock. Nurse Kelly. Diviner grace has never brightened this enchanted face. Oh, it's pathology. My dear, you have never looked lovelier. I'll never feel happier, Mr. Dow. Well, wow. Wonder if I can remember more of the poem. Wow, there must be something to that rabbit gag after all. There's Kelly never hugged me. Maybe if you worked on your disposition just a little, Mr. Wilson. All right, buddy, you're discharged. You're out of here. Wilson, take your hands off that thing. What? Apologize! <laughs>
Apologize? Apologize, apologize! You heard the doctor. <laughs> I apologize. This way to the door, sir. Well, thank you. If I leave, I'll remember. Uh, You're nuts. A, just a moment now. Do, uh, do women often come up to you and give you a hug like Miss Kelly just did now? Every now and then, Doctor. Hmm. Oh. And you know what else? I encourage it, too. Oh. Well. Uh, go the hell with decency. Go ahead and call. Go ahead and knock. We'll bring him in. Oh, Dr. Sanders. Oh, uh, just a moment, Doc. Doctor, do you agree with my diagnosis? Yes, yes. Uh, go ahead and bring them all in. Mrs. Simmons, Judge Gaffney, you can come in now. Is it settled? Yes, I find that I concur with Dr. Sanderson. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, that's wonderful. What a relief. Good boy. Wonderful. Let's celebrate. I've got the name of some new bars in the back of this book. Elwood. Oh. oh. This injection carries a dangerous reaction. We have to get his consent in order for me to give him the injection. Will he give the consent? He will if I ask him. And to give up this rabbit? I don't think so. Don't ask him. Just give it to him. Uh, Bessie's barn dance. Blondie's chicken in. Better late than never. Benny's driving. Vita, let's go to Benny's driving. We should probably telephone ahead for a table. How many of us will there be? Uh, oh, uh, one, two, three. Oh, Alan! <laughs> Mr. Dow. Yes, Doctor. I have this, uh, in this Formula 977. That will be good for you. Now will you, you take it? Dr. Chumley, I'm sure if you came up with this, it's a wonderful thing. And if I happen to run into anyone who could use it, I'll definitely recommend it. But as for me, I don't think I care for it. Do you hear that, Doctor? Do you hear that, Judge? That's what we have to put up with. Vita, do you want me to take this? Elwood, I'm only thinking of you. You're my brother, and I've known you for years. And I only want what's best for you. This Harvey doesn't want what's best for you. He's making a fool out of you, Elwood. Don't be a fool. Oh, okay, Vita. I, I won't be. I won't be. Why, you could be on the Western Slope Water Board if you would only go down there and ask them. Okay, Vita. If that's what you want, Harvey and I will go down there tomorrow and ask. Tomorrow? Oh, I don't want to see another tomorrow. Not if Myrtle May and I have to live another day in that house with that Harvey. Why, I have no life. We have no social life. We're miserable. No, oh, I wish I were dead and you probably don't even care. Well, I've always wanted Vita to have everything that she needs. Vita, are you sure? Okay, Doctor, I'll take it. Where do I go? Uh, Dr. Sanderson's office. Oh, Dr. Chumley? Yes. Say goodbye to the old fellow for me, won't you? How long will this take? Only a few minutes. Why don't you wait? We'll wait. Dr. Sanderson said it would only be a few minutes. Oh, Mother, don't fidget. Oh, how can I help it? Well, here, just take a look at this color. How stunning. Can't you imagine me in a house coat of this color? Yes, dear, but just let me get a good night's sleep first. Come in. What do you want? I'm looking for a little short... Oh, there you are. Lady, you jumped out of my cabin without paying me. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. How much is it? From out of town to here, 275. 
275? My goodness. Well, I could have thought I brought my coin purse. Uh, Myrtle May, do you have any money? Oh, no. I spent that money Uncle Elwood gave me on my new hairdo for the party. Uh, Judge Gaffney, would you happen to have 275 I could borrow to give this gentleman? I've got a check. We don't take check, I know. Oh, Dr. Chumley, would you happen to have 275 I could give this man? Uh, no time. I don't think you even have my wallet. I have to give this injection. Uh, well, I'll have to get it from my brother, but he's in there getting an injection, so you'll have to wait. Yeah, hold on, lady. You're going to get my money from your brother? And he's here to get some of that stuff they shoot out here? Yes, but it'll just be a moment. I want my money now. I said it would only be a moment. And besides, I want you to drive us back to town after we're done. And I told you I want my money now. Well, of all the pig-headed, stubborn... I should say so. What's wrong with you? Nothing that 275 won't fix. Take it or leave it. Very well. I can't believe of anything so ridiculous in my life. Uh, Dr. Chumley, uh, Dr. Chumley, will you send Elwood out here? This man won't wait. Uh, don't be long. Oh, Elwood, <laughs> dear, I came without my coin purse. Would you please give this man two seventy-five, but not a penny more? He's been very rude. Yes, certainly, Peter. Good evening. That is my name, Elwood P. Pleased to meet you. Lofgren, Brian. Lofgren's mine, E.J. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Lofgren. Mr. Lofgren, this is my sister, Mrs. Simmons, my charming little niece, Myrtle May Simmons, Dr. Chumley, and Judge Gaffney. Hi. Tell me, Mr. Lofgren, have you lived around here long? Yeah, I've lived here all my life. Interesting. And tell me, do you enjoy your work? Yeah, okay. I drive for Apex Caps for 15 years now, and my brother Joe, he drives for uh, Ground Caps, almost 12. You drive for Apex, and your brother Joe drives for Browns. Isn't that interesting, Vita? Mr. Lofgren, my sister and my lovely little, little, little niece here live with me at this address. Won't you and your brother come and have dinner with us sometime? Sure, be glad to. When? When would you be glad to? You can only make it on Tuesday night. Come on duty all the rest of the week. Okay. Then we'll look for you and be glad to have you on Tuesday. Won't we, Vita? Atwood. I'm certain this man has friends of his own. Oh, Vita, one can never have too many friends. Elwood, you're keeping Dr. Chumley waiting. Oh. Don't be rude. Sir, sorry, Doctor. Yeah, we better get on with this okay. now. Just one moment. Here you are, Doctor. Keep the change. Thank you. We'll look forward to having you on Tuesday night, and we'll expect you and your brother for dinner. If you'll excuse me. Sure. Sweet guy. Certainly. And you just as well could have waited. Oh no, lady. I've been driving this route for 15 years. Brought them out here and taking them back. It changes them. Well, I certainly hope so. Oh, you ain't kidding me. They bring them out here, they sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. They chat with me. Sometimes we stop and watch the sunset and look at the birds flying. Sometimes we look at the birds and there are no birds and watch the sunset when it's raining. We have a small time. Now we get a big tip. But afterwards, oh, oh, no, no, no. Afterwards, oh, oh, what do you mean afterwards, oh, oh? They crap, crap, crap. They yell at people, watch the lights, watch the bridge, watch the intersections. They scream at me to hurry. They got no faith in me or my cab. But it's the same cab, it's the same driver. We're going back over the very same road. 
It ain't worth it, and I get no tips. Oh, but my brother would have tipped you. He's ge very generous, always has been. No, no, lady, listen to me. After this, he'll be a perfectly normal human being. And we all know what SOBs they are. Glad to meet you. I'll wait. Oh, Myrtle May, did you hear that? Judge, did, did you hear that? Oh, Dr. Chumley, Dr. Chumley, stop! You Please, I don't want him to have it! Mother! You can't stop this injection. I don't want Elwood like that! I don't like people like that! Judge, just stop her! Oh, Mother, stop this! Oh, you shut up! I've lived longer than you have. I remember your father. I remember my father. Hey, hey, what, what's all this commotion out here? What, this thing is sounding off again? You haven't given him the injection yet. No, no, but we're ready. Wilson, take her away. Yeah. Oh, get your hands off of me, you white slaver! You don't know what you want. Oh. You didn't want that white rabbit either. What difference does it make to you? It's not your home. You don't have to come over. What difference does it make if Myrtle May, Elwood, and I want to live with Harvey? All right, have it your own way. But I'll be not called from the club again, interrupting the game for any animal, no matter how big it is. Elwood! Elwood! Yes, Vita. Oh, Elwood. Oh. There, there, Vita. Vita's all tired out. She's had a big day. <laughs> Elwood, I want to go home now. I want to leave. I, I hate this place. I wish we'd never come here. Okay. Well, let's, we'll see here now. It's whatever Vita says, Doctor. Oh, why, look at this. My coin purse was in here the whole time. I could have paid that cabbie myself. Harvey. Come along, Elwood. Come along, Myrtle May. Let's go. Good evening, Dr. Chumley. Hurry along, Elwood. Okay. Oh, Dr. Chumley. For years I've known what my family thinks of Harvey. But I've often wondered what Harvey's family thinks of me. There you are. Dr. Chumley, I beg your pardon. You're standing in his way. Where have you been? We've been looking all over for you. 